Hello there. Welcome back to the animal room where today I'm going to be setting up a custom enclosure for my Darth Vader praying mantis. Now these guys are also known as Vietnamese ghost mantises, but their common name is Darth Vader mantis. This is a very cool mantis species that I've loved keeping so far, and I figured today is time to make him a new home. So without further ado, the first thing we need to do is uh, go to the garage. Okay, we're here in the garage. So the first order of business in this project is, uh, well, let's take a look at the enclosure first. The enclosure I'll be using is a custom made wooden glass enclosure. If you would like to see a little more how I made this, I do have a video on the channel, so definitely go check that out. It's basically the same one that I use for the dead leaf mantis, except this one is slightly smaller as Darth Vader mantises don't get nearly as big. Regardless, this will be the perfect canvas for us to start building our enclosure. So the first thing we need to do is, is the background. In order to make said background, as I did last time, I'll start by using some XPS foam as well as the tank itself. I'll start by taking some measurements of the inside of the tank and then transferring those measurements onto the piece of XPS foam. I'll do a little test fit after cutting it to make sure everything fits, and then I'll move on to drawing my pattern. Now, my original plan was to do like a sort of vining thing around like a tree branch type thing. So with the pattern drawn like I did last week, I basically mirrored some of the patterns onto other pieces of foam and cut them out in thicker pieces to help add a little bit of that depth. I then repeated this multiple times and hot glued them to the other piece of foam. I then carved the edges to help make texturing a little bit easier and went back with the wire brush drill bit. And it was at this point that I realized. Yeah, so uh, this isn't gonna work at all. So I decided just to make a different one. So this first one you can see, it just, it was way too small, way too detailed to even like blend anything together. It just didn't work. So I just simplified it. I made one that's just, you know, got these two little things like that. And then I'll just maybe add a little few little, you know, divots and stuff like that. Just make it a little more simpler since it's such a small design. So now I'm going to use the wire brush drill bit and we're going to carve us a background. Well, this one turned out a lot better. The blending is a lot better. The texture, I tried to do kind of like a bark texture. I think it is a little more simple than I wanted, but I think that's good for such a small enclosure like this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a heat gun and I'm going to just run that over it. That'll kind of seal up the foam and make it a little harder. And then like I did last time, I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of that sun papier and give it a little bit smooth and that'll also help bring out a little bit of the texture. But, and then in terms of texture, I'm actually pretty happy with the way the texture looks. I think the tree kind of branch areas have that nice like sharper bark texture and then the areas behind it kind of have like a little bit of a smoother one. I might try and paint it a little bit differently, make this look more like maybe like a dirt. I'm not exactly sure, but speaking of, it's time to paint the background using some white tintable dry lock as well as concrete pigments to give it color. Star Starting by pouring some of the dry lock into a small container and then mixing up some of the charcoal pigment with it. This will give me my first base coat. And the purpose of this coat is just to cover the entire piece. Make sure to get in all the little nooks and crannies and cracks and whatnot and cover all the pink. Then I come back with lighter dry brush coats to help give me a little bit of color variation as well as highlight the high points and low points. Okay, so our background is completely finished. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously it's a little bit flat in terms of just the whole thing, but for a small setup like this, it should do just fine. Try to make this like a darker kind of dirt texture, and then I try to make the tree a little bit different. That way we just have a little bit of variety, and I think it turned out great. So now that our tank has the background installed and we are all good to go, the next part in bringing this thing to life and making it into an actual enclosure is the false bottom. Now, like last time, I will probably use a little bit of leak and I'll just put that in the bottom of it and then I'll put a piece of mesh over that. So let's make a false bottom. Mm -hmm. 
So now, like last time that we have the false bottom installed, the next thing we need to do is mix up the substrate, this time with no carrots. So the specific substrate mixture that I will be using for this tank consists of three part cocoa fiber, two part reptile bark, one part sand, one part charcoal, and half a carrot. Wait, 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 I said no carrots this time. That's better. Now with all the proper ingredients in the tub, I started to thoroughly mix it. Then I added it into the enclosure, making sure to give it a little bit of a slope towards the back to help add a little bit of depth. So now that we have our substrate in place, the next thing we need to worry about is the hardscape. Now, in case you haven't been following me for a little while, hardscape is such a crucial thing with praying mantises because when they grow, they molt, and which means that they come out of their exoskeleton. They do it upside down, and a lot of times if it goes wrong, like if they fall or don't have good enough grip, they can die from it. So making sure to give them plenty of branches and stuff to hang from is vital. So that means that when I go and pick out my wood, pieces that are flat and don't have a lot of branchy areas are not good options, but pieces like spider wood that do are good options. Hey there, look down here. So here's my little selection of wood. I think I'm gonna use this piece as the main one. And then I've just got a bunch of smaller pieces, which like I did last week, I'll start by test fitting my main piece and seeing where I want it to go and then getting some smaller pieces and attaching them with super glue. This is a great way to kind of create the scape that you want, but also, you know, just give you that creative freedom that you really can, you know, do whatever you want with. I've been doing it a lot recently. It's really helped my scapes and just, you know, giving me what I want. And it's easy. A lot of times you can get the smaller branches from the piece of wood itself. Okay, so here's our finalized scape. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I wasn't able to go as detailed this time as I don't have a bunch of little tiny pieces, but with what I had, I think I was able to create something quite nice. Got all those branches and all the areas for the mantis to hang down from and mold. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago when I made the dead leaf mantis enclosure, I talked a little bit about plants and how a lot of them have pesticides. Now, it's pretty much impossible to tell if your plant has pesticides or not, but chances are if you're getting it from a home improvement store, such as Home Depot or Lowe's, it has pesticides. Places where you'll have a less risk of that is reptile stores or places that specifically sell plants for vivariums and animals, but you're still not 100% guaranteed because you don't know where that plant came from and it's just, it's pretty hard to tell. But luckily there are some steps you can take to help reduce this risk. My personal process for this is I start by taking the plant and removing it from the pot, then I break up all of the soil around the roots, after that, I take it to the sink and then I rinse off any of the excess stuff. I also rub the leaves and stems just to try and get off as much as I can. And then something new that I'm going to start doing is I'm going to soak the plants for about 10 to 15 minutes in water to even more reduce that risk. It's pretty much impossible to get off all pesticides no matter what you do. So I'm just going to do as much as I can now with the resources I have available and just try and clean these as thoroughly as I can to help reduce that risk. Now, just a few little side notes about this whole soaking process. First of all, is that the water I'm using is dechlorinated. And the second is that I'm using warm water, not hot, but warm water is gonna be more effective than cold water for removing pesticides. So now that all of our plants have been prepped, it's time to finish this thing up. Obviously I'm going to add the plants, so I'll, you know, I'll plant the tank, I'll get them all in there, all good and stuff. And then, you know, I'll just go add a few little details like, uh, you know, the leaf litter and then maybe a little bit about, uh, ficus. And, uh, then it'll be done. So, let's be done.
Why, hello there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. A few little side notes is uh, one thing that I did in here is I did add the ficus. Unfortunately, I lost the footage for that. I also added a few smaller clients just because I felt like it needed a bit more. The other thing is as of right now, it has been about a week that I've let this thing sit and I just now put the Darth Vader Mantis in. I know you guys saw the footage of me putting them in, but I just put them in today. Just because I wanted to let those plants sit for a little bit longer just to make sure that nothing was going to happen. But regardless, that is going to do it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe. I've got a pretty cool project coming up next week to show you guys, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I'll see you all next week.